Hello and welcome to UC Today. I'm Tom Wright and I'm delighted to be joined by Craig from Cool Cabinet. Thanks for joining us today, Craig. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you back. Um, before we start, you know, to really dig into the conversation, do you want to just start by giving us an overview of Cool Cabinet's conversation analytics? Yeah, thank you very much. So essentially, um, what we've got here is uh, Cool Cabinet's service uh, that we offer is a tool which provides a, a tool to be able to make better decisions. Um, those decisions could be based on and leveraged off of the intelligent and accurate reports or the dashboards that we provide. And we, we tap into multiple data sources. So those data sources could be from your voice, uh, emails, chat, social media. Um, and we also have the ability also to tap into other data sources such as uh, post-call surveys or any of the CRM type tools as well. So there's quite a lot of powerful capabilities in there. Could you just sort of bring it all together and tell us why it's important? So essentially what we're looking at there is, is um, a 360 degree view in terms of uh, the business's performance, uh, business's efficiency, productivity. Uh, we look at uh, the customer engagements, we look at the employee, employee engagement or the employee processes as well, performance, KPI performance. Uh, we look across multiple levels of the organization as well. Now, whatever we deliver in terms of the, the dashboards is focused around uh, assisting the organizations to make those uh, informed decisions based on the factual information we can provide. And also important to the whole process is to uh, leverage the, the call recordings that customers have. Because we noticed as well that the call recordings essentially are, are an untapped uh, goldmine um, of, of business intelligence, which has previously been untapped, and now we're looking at leveraging off of that. So typical, typical use cases we see uh, with clients using in today's environment are across uh, you know, areas such as customer experience, uh, employee experience, uh, where we look at employee burnout or, or stress management. Uh, we look at things like um, your sales uh, tracking, so uh, closure rates, conversion rates, and so on. Um, we also look at um, other areas of, of a use case, uh, such as uh, debt collections, um, you know, churn, and then also risk uh, identification. And those are very, very important uh, to to majority of our clients in terms of improving their efficiencies and their operational pr um, performance. Just a couple of areas um, in terms of the what Core Cabinet offer around our services as well. Uh, which is key, is uh, we provide a, a very strong collaborative consultative approach. Uh, now, that focus there is focused around how do we assist organizations to identify the, the problem areas um, and then also to, to visualize any of the KPIs in terms of tracking, monitoring, or managing to ensure that they are achieved. Now, these can be typically uh, monitored across multiple levels. So those could be across a, an individual employee it could be from a team, it could be from a department, um, it can go all the way up in the organization, right up to the company level as well. So we've got that, that, that ability to, from a granular um, processing level as well. Okay, great. And if we look at how this can really benefit organizations, can you talk through how using conversation analytics with multiple data sources can help organizations manage multiple customer experience metrics? So... The problem, the problem that businesses face in today's environment is, uh, you know, they're, they're looking at massive volumes, uh, variety, and velocity of data uh, coming through to their to their businesses, and this increases on a daily daily basis. Um, additional to that is the the customer expectations um, are increasing massively in terms of service, in terms of quality, and the performance and the service delivered by any of the businesses. Uh, needs to be of, of uh, you know, utmost um, quality. Now, the solution behind that, and that's where Core Cabinet comes in, um, where we provide the, the analytics dashboards. And here we provide the, the, the dashboards are built specifically to provide a quick and easy visualization across 100% of all monitored uh, data, like I mentioned in terms of whether it be from uh, a call recording or an email or whatever, whatever data source it is. We also package uh, the, the, the dashboards into meaningful um, and, and tailored uh, sort of re visualization. Now, those, those packages are essentially built specifically to the client's um, um, value requirements as well, whatever is, is, is um, going to produce value to their organization. 
Um, and then also, uh, when, we, when we look at, and you'll see the dashboard that we'll display for you now, is essentially here we, we provide quick and easy visualization in terms of, for example, the, the NPS type scores. And you'll see on there that we've got uh, key indicators. Uh, so the key, one of the key indicators and on there is the emotion. Uh, so the emotion, what we monitor there is we're monitoring both from uh, the client as well as from the agent uh, to determine what are the, what are the emotional levels uh, being detected. Those have got a direct impact back into the, uh, the, the custom experience uh, as well as the employee experience type process. We've got a, we've got a, a, a dial there in terms of your total NPS. Um, and then we've also got to, to, to allow the client in one single dashboard, a quick visualization in terms of trending. Uh, you'll see on there, we've got a line graph with trending where we can actually show things like anomalies, uh, identified anomalies. Those are all automated type anomalies that will pop up and actually allow the, the, the uh, management to determine where the problem areas reside. On the left-hand side, uh, we, we've got the, the bar graph. And there, what we've got in the bar graph is we, we're giving a bit more granular input in terms of um, the various uh, contributors towards the NPS score. In other words, your promoters, your passives, and your detractors. Now, all of those can be selected uh, in terms of uh, whatever filters want to be applied uh, to the particular uh, dashboard, whether it be a, uh, according to a date range, uh, to a site, to a, uh, to a team, however you want to apply it, we can apply it directly on there. So the, these, these dashboards um, lead immediately to um, you know, a focused type of level of improvement, but they've got ripple effects throughout um, the organization as well into areas such as sales, uh, your churn management, your risk management, and any of the other types of, of um, you know, uh, departments or businesses that um, could be affected. I think it would be good, actually, to dig into that ripple effect a bit more. So could you talk us through how conversation analytics can help organizations reduce customer churn? Sure, sure. Um, so when we, when, when, when we look at the problems that clients, you know, from a customer churn or cancellation um, perspective, uh, here we're looking at, you know, the, the customers of today, they, they don't have a problem with cancelling. They don't have a problem with voting with their feet. So they're very, very, you know, there's no hesitation in terms of that. It's just, right, I've had enough of your business, I'm moving on. The problem as well is that they've got too many options. Um, well, it's all of us, I guess. Uh, we've got too many options out there and it's very easy to cancel. Now, the threat that is, that is posed on the client uh, and on the customer's side as well is from a customer could be uh, either a verbal threat uh, or a written threat. In other words, it could be coming through on email or chat or anything of the sort, or it could be expressed emotionally. So it doesn't have to necessarily be spoken to be a threat um, detected. Now, without analytics, uh, the, the typical process businesses follow currently is to, to actually allow or, the, or, or rely on their agents to actually uh, do the reporting in terms of potential cancellations or potential threats. Now, the, the, the solution to behind this is obviously from a core cabinet perspective, what we're looking here is our analytics monitors 100% of all customer engagements. So whether those be on your voice uh, conversation, or on your email, however that is, we will monitor that and we will detect it and actually report on it as well. So once again, when we spoke about earlier on, we, we actually look at the fine tuning and the identification in terms of the uh, cancellation threats. Now, those cancellation threats, as I mentioned, it could be mentioned, it could be spoken out verbally, it could be sent or put on an email, but also it could be pick, uh, detected by uh, Core cool Cabinet's unique um, artificial intelligence, emotional uh, intelligence uh, tool. Now, what we, what we monitor there for is we, we monitor for the emotion and the sentiment, as I showed you on the dials just now in the diagram, but that emotion is monitoring for the acoustics. So we are monitoring the acoustics in terms of the pitch, the cadence, the tone of the conversation. We create a score out of that. We then also monitor for the sentiment. Now, the sentiment, what we're looking at there is we're looking at the, the linguistics. So in other words, the, the, the specific words spoken by the, uh, the client. We then create a collaborative type score out of those two, and then we uh, uh, determine exactly what the true context of that conversation was. Now, when we look at this as well from a, from a client side, uh, from a churn, you know, we, what we're looking at here as well, we want to identify where the potential um, reasons were that the client is wanting to cancel. Why did the client want to cancel? 
Um, was that due to poor service, bad product, um, bad pricing? Uh, did the competition offer them um, a, a sweeter deal than our organization? Once we understand that, our business's management can now start making the corrective action in terms of any particular um, uh, categorization. Um, and as I, as I mentioned, in terms of um, the other areas that we monitor is the, is the emotional um, uh, the sentiment in terms of the, uh, the, the client. And critical to this as well is when we're looking from the client's perspective, we need to take our management, need to take corrective actions as quickly as possible to raise those alarms, but then also to be able to monitor those and move forward in terms of those, um, those corrective actions. Another, another element behind churn management as well is we also monitor uh, internally from an agent. So our dashboards are built around, like, like I've mentioned there, we're monitoring from an external perspective, but we're also monitoring internally. So from the agent side, we're monitoring to determine what techniques we used. Uh, did our agents, uh, were our agents successful? Uh, did they have a good conversation or did they have a successful conversion to, to prevent a, a, a customer cancelling? Or did they have a bad and unsuccessful attempt? Now, if they had a good or a successful attempt, um, what techniques did they use? Could we take those techniques and actually replicate those techniques across um, with the rest of the team and create a focused training program to offer to all of our other uh, agents? If it was a bad or unsuccessful attempt, um, here we, are, we, we identify, okay, so where's the problem? What was the problem with this particular agent? And why did they have? Why did they struggle to to save this particular um, client? In that particular case, there we, we we put in specific training to improve that particular um, behaviors or techniques that they follow as well. Um, so, you know, critical to the whole process, as I mentioned earlier on, is we have to put those those actions or corrective actions in place as quickly as possible. But at the same time, we also need to monitor it to be able to. Uh, determine were those corrective actions actually making an impact and did, were, were they making were having the desired uh, result okay thanks craig we've uh, we've covered a lot of ground in this conversation it's been fantastic but there's one more point i'd like to ask you about if that's okay and it's around sales so i wonder if you could talk us through how conversation analytics can impact sales conversions and product purchases sure so so sales when, when you look at sales, um, the sales agents f um, face an absolute barrage uh, in terms of, uh, you know, pushing for customer engagements, pushing for, uh, you know, where, where sales come across all the, the other data media as well. So as I mentioned there, the voice, um, the, the, the email, the chat, um, and it's, it's not, it's, you know, no customer is, is, is communicating over a single point. Now, the, the, the pressure on uh, the sales agents is, is immense uh, to, to close the deals. And once again, as we mentioned in terms of the customer experience earlier on, is the client demands are increasing massively as well. They're expecting so much more for you know more bang for their buck essentially. Um, you got certain agents that they they have certain behaviors, they have certain techniques. They don't they're not aware of those bad behaviors or those those negative uh, behaviors. And those typical um, bad behaviors could be uh, what we classify as um, overtalk. Um, or silence. Now, over talkers, we only monitor from a client's perspective. So, uh, sorry, from 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 the agent's perspective, where we're monitoring to see did the did the agent actually speak over the uh, the client and not allow the client to actually convey the message that they that they will actually want and actually have the opportunity to to um, say their say. Now, the problem there that results in a misaligned uh, sale or possibly in a no sale at all uh, because of bad behavior from uh, the agent, or we could or, or potentially identify um, where the sales agents don't have necessary access to the desired tools to actually deliver the results. In other words, being able to uh, access their CRM or whatever tools that they require, their quoting tools, quickly and rapidly to actually uh, to bring about that sales conversion. So the solution behind the to behind all of this is once again uh, the core cabinet, uh, our, our interactive dashboards. Um, so what we focus on here, and you'll see on the on the dashboards that we'll, we'll we'll put up on the display as well, is essentially what we're looking at is we're looking at as how do we actually focus in on things like your close rate, um, your agent techniques, uh, missed opportunities. Any of those are key metrics that we want to monitor on here as well. So on the, on the first dashboard that we will show you, um, so here we here we're looking at um, 
on the bottom side there, we've got a scatter chart. Now the scatter chart is showing you 100% of all the calls uh, coming through on this particular um, contact center. Now, ideally we want um, the sweet spot of this particular graph is we want that bottom left-hand quadrant. In other words, we want the overtalk below 20% and we want our silence below 40%. Now, what that, what that, if I had to go and select on there um, immediately on the 20 to 40 percent, it's going to allow me to do a, a typical what if type analysis. So the what if would be to say, well, what is my closure rate? And you can see there currently the closure rate on that uh, is 50, uh, 53 percent. If I had to take that closure rate and convert that to just looking at the 20 percent and the 40 percent, my closure rate would be typically between five to six percent increased in terms of uh, performance. Now that is immediately uh, in terms of revenue, better better, better uh, um, closure rate, but also in terms of increased uh, sales revenue as well. When we look at the, the second dashboard that we've, we've put up on the display here as well, so here we're looking at uh, specific sales metrics, um, and here we're looking at uh, your, your close rate, we look at missed opportunities, you'll see the, the, the donut charts there with missed opportunities, uh, we're looking at sales transition trends as well. Um, here we try, we're looking to, to, to try and determine uh, the, the trends. Now, the trends here we're picking up, we can pick up per agent, per group, or per team, per department. Um, so we've got a whole lot of other information that we can detect out of here as well. On the bottom left-hand side there, you'll see that we've got a, a forecasted close rate. So the forecasted close rate, or our predictive type analytics type report here, is to show the, 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 the viewer what, what happened to the close rate over the past period? Now that period could be is determined by the, the date range on the top, uh, but we also, um, the, the artificial intelligence engine also determines what the forecast is for that close rate going forward based on the historical information that we've actually managed to gather there. Great, Craig, thank you so much. We've, uh, we've covered so much ground today and I think the slides really help illustrate what it is you're saying as well um, around the benefits of conversation analytics. So I appreciate you joining us and thank you so much for sharing your insights. Well, thank you very much, Tom. I appreciate the opportunity. And like, like I mentioned, is, um, you know, these examples are only, only just a few uh, examples out of our entire uh, portfolio. Uh, we've got tons of other examples which I'd love to take any of the clients through. Um, and then, uh, you know, we, we've, we've also got, uh, we can take you through the KPI tracking, uh, it, you know, we can also insist, assist in terms of uh, better decision making, increasing customers revenue, and a whole lot of other elements that uh, we could assist clients in terms of the analytics. Absolutely, Craig. Thanks again for joining us. And thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and a share on social media. And we'll see you next time.